Hello friends, followers and fellow flight simulators. Welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today we are looking to a recently released add-on. I'm pretty sure you have seen a lot of videos around and some criticism about this newly released add-on. Uh, but I will be going through what I think about it and whether this is worth uh, trying out right now or Maybe you should wait until you see some improvements. Uh, the add-on I'm talking about is, you guessed it right, it's the Ground Services add-on, the GSX Pro, released by FS Dream Team. Currently we are at Stuttgart uh, in this Smart Wings livery with the Boeing 737-700. And we are pretty much done the pre-flight, our flight plan is entered and we are ready to Except the passengers after refueling the aircraft and I left the refueling uh, to this stage just to show you guys what it does. Without further ado, let's first jump into the cockpit and then we will talk about the rest and call the fuel truck and I will explain what I mean by that. Alright, there we are in the cockpit of 737. As I said, our pre-flight is done, the performance calculation is not done because we haven't loaded the, the cargo and the passengers yet. And I'll talk about a couple things. The menu is over here at the toolbar. And to start with, this does not have a back function. So when you click something, there is no going back. You have to close it and reopen it if you think you should do something else before. I wish, or that's at least my wish list item, that the developer adds a back button to take us to the main page if we change our minds to go back. I'm not sure if the key combinations give you something to go back, but I wasn't able to find anything. So that's the first thing I wish the developer adds in a future update. The settings, airport positions and customizing the airplane, we are not going to dive into this. But if you are interested to learn, just leave me a comment and I will try to record a tutorial on how you can edit your parking positions uh, as well as the aircraft to make this work a little bit better. So let's start with the fuel truck. So according to the manual, in a third party aircraft, you have to use the fuel menu in the FMC which is right over here, right that, and set your desired fuel when the fuel truck arrives and then it should remain there for the entirety of the refueling process until you see the correct fuel amount on the truck's uh, fuel counter or fuel display. And the other thing is you have to sometimes click multiple times to be able to open the menu. Sometimes for one click doesn't do it, I'm not sure what the reason is. So let's first request fuel and let's also go outside, we'll call this, all right, we'll go outside and that's what the manual says, you have to wait until the fuel truck arrives and set your desired fuel using the aircraft's fuel menu. And this is not talking about the fuel menu you see under ground services. Uh, you over here where you set your desired fuel and then request the fuel truck using the FMC's uh, PMDG's ground services I'm sorry it's asking specifically for this and this page automatically uh, comes up when the fuel truck arrives the other thing is the jetway so these are autogen jetways generated by GSX which supports the boarding and you'll see the passengers walking down the jetway when we get to that phase but let's just call the jetway too because this doesn't always work as intended especially in some airports uh, some airports they are not either getting close to the aircraft leaving a huge gap between the door and the aircraft even if things it's in place and there is no editing of the jetways in the editor so it is at this point not fixable I hope the developer irons out the issues with this auto-generated jetways so that you don't have to, as the user, do a lot of things, fiddling and setup, 
to make this work. And the menu closes on its own after a timeout in Turbo Lighting it was 10, 20 seconds, something. I'm not sure if this can be set. And as you see, I'm clicking multiple times. So let's call the Jetway 2 and take a look to see how it works in Stuttgart because I haven't been here uh, using GSX. Um, everything you see on the Jetway itself is coming from the uh, GSX Jetways. This one seems to work better than the other ones I have seen. So kudos to the team. At least the default Stuttgart works. I'm gonna jump into the drone camera. So that's the fuel truck. And over here you'll see a digital display that displays the fuel. I'm gonna keep this view, jump into the cockpit and our expected fuel for fly uh, today's flight from Stuttgart to our destination airport is 7.3 tons. So we'll set 7300 fuel and immediately roll outside. You'll see it gave us 2,000 and we only had 1,000 in the tanks and now it's leaving. So it's not doing what the manual says. It should have stayed until we saw 7,300 on that display, but this was a lightning speed refueling. So that's one of the things and that's why I don't use GSX refueling when I'm using the 737. Instead, I call the fueling of uh, PMDG's ground services. So that's that for you. The jetway seems to work. And I'm pretty sure you have seen the catering trucks. Uh, the other thing is the GPU. GSX GPU doesn't work with the PMDG. It works with the default aircraft, but I tried it with the 146 Professional PMDG. Uh, it didn't work. It works with fly-by-wire. I haven't tested it with the Phoenix. Not sure if it will work, but you have to use the PMDG's ground services for the GPU because the car drives up the GPU but the plane doesn't uh, sense or see its presence and there is no uh, cable connection to the GPU so it's not detecting the GPU so that's why the GPU is not working which is not a huge deal breaker because GPU you have one in the PMDG settings for Part of their ground services so that's fine to use i didn't feel like it's a deal breaker to be honest the other thing you can do is to call the catering trucks which we will do here uh, before accepting the passengers request catering service and they will come they do work i think they do work uh, great and maybe the best working part of gsx in my personal opinion, uh, at least with 737, but for, for example, the Mad Dog MD82 from Leonardo, the service door is too too sh uh, short, if that's the right word. It's not tall enough for the 3D modeled uh, catering workers to get into the aircraft and their heads click through the airframe. So that's one of the things. They do bend a little bit when entering the aircraft. I think FS Dream Team told about that, but that door is not big enough in the MD-82. And for 146, you don't get catering trucks that raises their um, containers up to the door level. You get two vans for the 146 and there are no animations, which I think is okay because 146 is a smaller and a shorter aircraft that's close to the ground and I don't think that field, uh, that catering truck will have a way of uh, getting to the door. So while they are coming, why don't we go ahead into the cockpit and start our APU to start the boarding. So uh, what is this? Start the APU and we'll put the packs on and get ready to accept the passengers. In PMDG, you have to simultaneously start the boarding using PMDG's ground services menu too for this to work because, well, either you add the passengers manually or you use PMDG's boarding services to board the passengers into the aircraft. Well, today in, we are expecting 
109 passengers so that's our expected passenger count or target passenger count and we can start the boarding um, the other thing we need to do is the doors we need to open the front entry door let's see there are the cadence trucks just on time let's just move to the side view and see what it does they do open the doors automatically but you need to close them in the PMDG when they are done with loading your sandwiches or food or drinks whatever they are bringing for your flight you will see this shortly door will open the guy will come with the service cart and then move the cart into the aircraft both here and at the aft position the ice sounds as you hear probably and he's bending a little bit to get through the door which is a nice touch and this seems to work uh, mostly with PMDG I'm pretty sure it will work with A322 I haven't tested but it worked with fly-by-wire however with the recent updates to the fly-by-wires uh, door controls uh, the service door is only at the aft and there is I didn't find a way to open this door like the forward cabin so I'm not sure if that's a fly-by-wire thing but as you see they are boarding the aircraft uh, or bringing the catering stuff into the aircraft we have APU power available let's put the generators on bus and we'll put the packs to auto and APU bleed we'll put it on so now we are ready to board the passengers as soon as we are done with the catering let's turn the seatbelt signs to on position and the rest we will continue and then take a look at the pushback after the boarding to start the boarding I highly recommend you start the GSX boarding first let's maybe go outside and find the view that you'll see the maybe with the drone camera see the jet a little bit better from a different angle maybe from here so that we see passengers and the flight crew coming through the jetway and they will be almost done so let's request the boarding so again for the catering trucks to leave they are waiting us to close the doors so let's do that and send them on their way and you'll see them pulling their walkways and leaving the aircraft the aft run and the forward run is now leaving let's go back to the drone camera and we'll see the flight crews boarding the aircraft this will probably work in Stuttgart I think I haven't tested with default jetways you can exclude certain airports from the auto generated jetways but I have read in the forums that that might cause the, the the 3D models of pilots, flight crew and the passengers might not be able to use that jetway to board the aircraft but this one seems to work uh, some airports you get gaps between the jetway and they do like a Jedi uh, force jump through that gap to get to the other side so a little bit unrealistic and for an add-on that's created to increase the realism uh, that's a little bit a bummer but I'm pretty sure FS Dream Team knows these issues and they will be fixing those bugs uh, with updates so the crew is in the aircraft oh actually the oh, we have to open the door go back inside open the door go outside and the crew will board the aircraft through the jetway you are seeing them right here let's go inside and see if we can see them entering the aircraft you should see them coming through the door it's asking me to do something that but beeping is that but we see the 
flight crew, let's see what GSX might be asking. It might be asking for the cargo doors, if that's what it's waiting. Yep, it's waiting on the cargo door. So let's go back into the cockpit and open the front and aft cargo doors. So as you see, when we open the doors, the luggage loaders are connecting and we should see the luggage being loaded as well. Let's take a look at the passengers. They started loading as well. There you go, first passenger. And you can change this in intensity of the passengers in the settings menu. Uh, right over here under GSX settings. I'm pretty sure you're not seeing the screen. But let's do this and you should be able to. Over here you have the simulation timings and the passenger density so we can increase this apply and it will make the passengers dense so you'll see more models coming through the jet plane all right so that's the passengers and on the luggage loader side you should see the luggages being loaded when the baggage trains arrive. I'm not sure where they are, we are waiting on them. They might be somewhere coming around, driving up to the aircraft, even though I'm not seeing them. Hopefully we will, before the passengers board the aircraft and the boarding is complete. The pushback tag is also replaced by GSX, which has a tow bar and we'll take a look at pushback next but let me just pause the video here and bring you guys back when the baggage carts are here right looks like our baggage carts are here and they are driving up to their positions and shortly we should see the luggages being loaded into the aircraft using the conveyor belts we'll take a look at this very shortly and then I will finish this up and as you see here there are some problems with the 3D models here looks like they didn't render quite well um, that's again something hopefully they will look into correct in the near future and I will share a couple things about the installer too when we are done with watching the crew loading the aircraft and finishing up the pushback. As you see that guy over there started loading the luggages onto the conveyor belt and they are being transferred into the cargo compartments of the aircraft. This part is okay, the animations are nice, although there are some glitches that I'm pretty sure you are seeing, but well, at least it is working. And as you see, this baggage car puller or tow tug uh, was not rendering properly and all of a sudden it did render so I'm not sure why that happened but you got the idea so let me finish this and then we will look at the pushback all right welcome back friends our boarding is completed last baggage loader is leaving and the GSX is asking us to close the doors so let's go ahead and close our cargo compartments and that should take care of all the doors uh, forward and aft as well as the cargo compartments and all the doors lights should be extinguished so at this point we are pretty much ready for pushback we'll turn our fuel pumps to on Electrical hydraulic pumps to on, anti-collision light to on, seatbelt sites are already on and the rest of the checks I'm not going to worry about it because I'm just demonstrating GSX here. So we'll go ahead and jump outside, get a little bit closer and call the pushback tag that's waiting for us over there. Then GSX menu takes probably another click to bring it up it's so confusing 
prepare for pushback and engine start and in the meantime we'll just go into the cockpit quickly and then go to ground services jetway is retracting itself we are on APU power APU we should be on the bus yes it is we can release the ground power remove the chocks and we should be ready to go so that's our guy with the bypass pin and I'm not sure why some of the sounds are coming from my desktop speakers some of them are coming from my headphones so it's also a little bit confusing so that guy is going to put the bypass pin in place but the, completed. Bypass pin inserted. the ones you are hearing right now is coming from my desktop speakers I don't know why Maybe it's something in the settings that I have to change. Let's take a look. So that's the tag coming up. Again, it will take a second click. Oh, I cannot. Yep, GSX settings. Audio. And yes, I probably have to select this. And everything goes away when you change the settings. Okay. The engine. Co ATL engine is restarting probably because of that change, but let's just do this again. Just do the pushback part of things. German wings. Um, we'll see same things happening again. Sorry about that, but I just wanted you guys to hear the communication as well. Here is our guy. And well, we are doing this again. Take a look at how he is entering the uh, nose door compartment. His head will clip through the airframe. Again, this is a low aircraft. There you go. Now we are hearing, I'm hearing it from my uh, headphones. He'll get down there. And there you go. He is not kneeling or doing any kind of animation to make it a bit more realistic. So he's inserted the bypass pin in place. There it is. And then the tug will drive up. And that uh, steering animation is not quite right, if you ask me. So I'm hoping the developer to fix these issues as well and make it look like it's steering to the correct uh, side or the wheel is facing the correct side when the tug is steering so that's a little bit disappointing he's locking the gear there you're hearing the sounds he's gonna lift the wheel now and he's taking his time so he is not quite fast maybe I don't know if it's the, if it's the uh, real time timing of these things and there is I, I wasn't able to find any option to speed things up all right, so now we are ready to push back, and if I go up, we need to push the tail to the left and nose to the right to get to the runway, which is right over there. So we'll just do that. Tail left, nose right. Let's go down. So he's asking us to release the parking brakes. Let's jump into the cockpit. Parking blades are released. So now he is asking us to start the engines while he is pushing us. We can just do that and put the packs to off and start with the left engine. And go outside to watch the animation of the tug. It's doing a pretty good job. In my opinion, the engine is spooling up and he's gonna put us right on the taxiway, which is nice to have. That's we can I can introduce fuel and keep with the engine start without going into the cockpit because I want you guys to see this part rather than checking the engine instruments.
So now we are turning again that wheel is facing the wrong direction we are turning right the wheel is turning left so magic tag right there I can understand the auto generated jetways and other stuff but this animation here this is not this shouldn't be here for a completed product uh, at final release well, there you see it. Now we can go into the cockpit and start the second engine. The first one is already there. So he's asking us to set the parking brakes. Let's do that too. And he's gonna disconnect. But he's gonna wait until we confirm good engine start. And he will not disconnect until we tell him to do so. So that's. 22% let's introduce the fuel and start our second engine or left engine and we will tell him to disconnect and we will stop here uh, the other thing you can do is you can call a follow me car that will take you to the runway which I'm pretty sure you have seen in other videos so I'm not gonna uh, keep you guys here for something you might have already watched somewhere else So he is now asking us to confirm the good engine start. Alright, we have good engine start, so let's tell them that it's good for them to disconnect. And he is gonna now disconnect. He will lower the wheel first and then pull the bypass pin and disconnect the tow bar. Actually disconnect the tow bar and then pull the bypass pin. But again, he is gonna clip through the airframe when doing this. So now the tug is free, he is gonna pull back and what is that? Yeah, these things, these things really need some fixes. Uh, he's gonna walk up there and hold the bypass pin in his hand, if we can spot him. There you go. He's gonna walk to the right, actually. No, wrong button. We will see him from the co-pilot side if we get closer. To the window there he is holding the bypass pin giving us a go so guys this is an add-on that has the potential but it requires a lot of polishing and in my personal opinion this is not a release ready state I can live with not working jetways and other stuff but uh, some animations not done right is something probably most of us will not accept but i'm i'm pretty sure these will be addressed by fs dream team because fs dream team is a known reputable developer for flight sim uh flight simulation um, they have been around for a long time anyway that's the gsx part of things uh and the last thing i want to discuss with you guys is the installer so let me bring it up and we'll talk about that so for this part I'm not sure if it's just me or you guys are having the same issue with the installer here is the installer and every time I open this it detects an update and this never goes away there is always an update and it seems like it's not doing anything it's just reinstalling the entire uh, add-on from scratch or overriding uh, what it has already installed so if this is like same for you please let me know in the comments because I did not see anyone pointing this out but that update is constantly there and the manual says this should not be here if it's installed correctly so I'm not sure if that's a corrupt installation which I have done five times now 
or if this is a, a FS Dream Team Universal installer problem that it's not detecting uh, what's installed properly. Anyway, so that's that's that part there. And thanks for being here with me today. And I will be seeing you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd like to go a little bit faster and summarize what I think is working, what I think is not working. There are a lot of other videos showing these problems as well. So give the video a like and a thumbs up to help YouTube algorithm make this video reach to the other flight simmers. And if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber, please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications. Take care for now and I'll see you in the next video.